Hunchy Steve Kaufman here, Hunchy's World. As you know, I like to bring a lot of variety into the show. We have authors, we have artists, we have musicians. I have with me a very, very special musician today, Mac Golahan. He's a uh, principal trumpet player with the Mac Golahan Band. <laughs> okay. And Mac is a uh, very fine composer. He's been around a long time, not as long as me. He still has hair. We were talking one day up at John Baltimore's sax shop up on 46th Street, and we just were uh, chatting around, and we found out we like the same, have the same kind of musical interests, okay? For example, Mac is uh, heavily involved with jazz, the Latin scene. He's played with the Stones. Look out. I told you, we get big, big people on the show here, you know? Okay? He's been with Bowie. He's been with Duran Duran. I'll let him mention a couple of the others. I caught one of his uh, videos playing with the Larry Harlow uh, Orchestra, which is a serious Latin organization. Uh, Mac has recently completed a new album called Odyssey of Nostalgia. I'm going to hold it up here so you get a picture of what's happening. I'll put it in front of my face so you can see Mac. There it is, Odyssey of Nostalgia. And he plays some very, very interesting tunes on this that refer back to, I guess, the Depression. But we'll let Mac talk about all of that. And we'll just get into it. Mac, thanks for coming by. Thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. My <laughs> pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. We're going to have a good time here, and uh, we're just going to talk about music and things like that. Um, I, mean, I don't want to ask, you know, obvious questions like, uh, you know, what got you into music and all that. I mean, I leave that for the biographers, man. Uh, where are you originally from? Well, originally from North Carolina and Virginia, the... Uh, and I moved around quite a bit, of course, traveled quite a bit, and uh, went to Boston for a while before coming to New York, so it's uh -huh. been, been around all over. Yeah, you went to college for music or something? Okay. Yeah, I went to uh, Berkeley in oh, Boston. Oh, forget about yeah, it. There you went go, right there. there you I know? went there. Uh -huh. You know, Berkeley, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know, is considered one of the elite schools for musicianship. So that's very, very good. Uh, I was looking at some of the titles on the album here, Odyssey of Nostalgia, and it seems to me that you're playing Depression-era tunes, man. <laughs> or it would seem like that. I'll just read off some of the tunes here right. so uh, you know, people can get an idea of what's happening here. Uh, Violets for Your Furs. Okay. Here's one, Audie Shore's Nightmare. <laughs> we have Just a Gigolo. Um, Let's see, I want to name it, the uh, whole thing here is like, Two Sleepy People, Brother Can You Spare a Dime, and other, you know, ballads, all kinds of various rhythmic structures here. How did this album come about, Mac? Well, basically, uh, of course, we are going through some very troubled economic times right yeah. now, and, uh, and I saw that a lot of emphasis has been placed right now on shows. People are interested in that sort of thing. Uh, you've got Boardwalk Empire, you've got... Uh, all kinds of shows, you got prohibition uh, shows, all kinds of things that are relating to that era. And uh, of course, brother, can you spare a dime? A dime won't take yeah, you very far exactly these right, days, yeah, but the yeah. same basic message is there. And uh, there, it was a great era for music. And uh, I believe that we can also take advantage of this era and make this a great era for music as well. Although there's Maybe some incredible economic struggles, but like it can uh, certainly bring us into another great era for music because a lot of the uh, major record companies are experiencing extreme problems too so in a way that's an opportunity for more and more music to get out there without having to be scrutinized by lawyers and uh, and, and the likes you know to get music yeah, out yeah. so it's really uh, an opportunity for a wild west era uh, of musical enterprise to come about through individuals rather than uh, corporations so to speak so steady working right right exactly yeah, see, that's that's tremendous and especially nowadays with you have to on. yeah you have to stay out there and you have to keep busy and you have to keep working and uh and keep meeting new people and and uh making new fans and uh broaden your horizon with audiences no matter what the uh, venue is you know it venues sometimes are shocking you know, I can imagine in, today, in today's Vinny's times. meat market or something. Yeah, you never, you never know what you're going to be involved in, but it's also an incredible opportunity that can arise from all that. Yeah, well, I, I understand what you're talking about with that. You know, I am not 
a full-time musician, although I do play tenor, you know, and I'm always going up. Oh, yeah. John, why is the horn leaking, man? As a matter of fact, I was up there playing, and you had come over and said, hey, that's pretty nice. Yeah, you got a big sound. You got a big sound. I wrote, don't you? I I said, I said, you sound great, but what do I know? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I noticed you got some very, very serious heavy players out. You got Ronnie Kuba. Right. Melvin Sparks, uh, you were mentioning this is his last. Uh, recording or something like that. You want to talk about some of the people that are on the album? Yeah, well, well Melvin especially. Uh, I had actually met Melvin prior uh, to this recording on a recording he was producing, and uh, I asked him to play on my record, and uh, unfortunately, uh, no less than maybe a month later, he had passed. And uh, So this is a real tribute to Melvin here, his last recording that he was on as well. Uh, I mean, uh, Claudine Myers is on there. Uh, Ron McClure. Uh, yeah, look, check it out. We, I mean, we have a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, Bill, 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 there, Bill Easley, Olga Merides. Yeah. Like, look at the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some really, really good people that I work with quite often. And uh, you played with, uh, I think you mentioned Tina Turner. Right, right. That, right. This is um, this is fantastic. Yeah, that was in a uh, project called Live Aid that was in Philadelphia, uh-huh. and uh, there's been a, a, almost two thousand records or over two thousand records in my career. You know that I played with other people. Two thousand so. records, you know. I mean, I did thirty-seven books. It's not the same thing. <laughs> Two thousand records. Yeah. So, um, what are you really looking to accomplish with your music? And you well, understand, I have to ask these kind of a, these kinds of questions hmm. because I want the audience to understand what goes into being an artist, and 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 the trauma. <laughs> if you will, of being an artist and like having the frustrations to deal with the businesses and the corporations that are controlling the industry that are holding you back essentially in certain respects from putting together what you want to put together. What are you really looking for, Mac? Well, basically, just to put together an honest assessment of my music, what I can do with it, uh, the people that I'm performing with, to basically, it takes a long time to establish a voice in your playing yes, and establish an identity. So to me, if I get some, just some small part of the identity across mm-hmm. in each project, uh, it's almost a schizophrenic idea, identity that I have really in a way because it would take me probably 30 records to really get my real identity across because there's so many aspects of it through all the different music that I've played over years with other people. Uh-huh. So. In each project, I try to give an honest assessment of what that record is supposed to be about and what voice I can bring in interpreting the music, whether someone else wrote it or whether I wrote it. So gotcha. basically, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my goal, to get as honest an assessment of the, of the uh, project that I'm doing at that time. Yeah, I was, looking at the, I was looking at this particular CD and I said, okay, what piece do I want to pick out mm-hmm. to play, you know, give the audience a taste of what's happening and I noticed you have Nightmare by Artie Shore. Right, I, right. That was, when I was a kid, a couple of weeks ago when I had yeah. hair, I have a, I have a 10-inch Artie Shore's Greatest Hits. Right. LPT, I think it was, RCA. Right. And Nightmare is on there. And that was his they, theme song. Yeah, yeah that's really, right. I said, right. wow, man, yeah. no wonder he yeah. captured Lana Turner. Yeah. You know, that, no, yeah. we're going with that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to play a little bit of that. And... Um, Let's give it a listen. Great. Okay.
That is some serious stuff there, you know? It's a definite new interpretation of an old standard. Yeah, you know? no, so it it's really, uh, yeah. you don't want to use the word rocks. It's such a lame thing. It really yeah. moves. You got you yeah. got that swing thing going on, man. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very important. You know, coming up the way I did, I played in a lot of clubs. You can't beat the experience of uh, having to uh, uh, wait, wait on the fire escape for somebody for your money, <laughs> you know, yeah, right. when, when they're getting out or getting shot at in a club or something like that. These are things that kind of, uh, they develop your style, they develop who you are, your identity, and I, I think that's a big part of what's missing today is uh, the exposure to the real elements of traveling on the road and uh, being a real performing musician night after night after night. You did all the arranging on this? That are all the arranging on this one. And with record. the exception of the one tune, The Odyssey of Nostalgia, I mean, that's the one, that's your own. That one I actually wrote, yeah. uh, and the wrote and arranged. Are, uh, what we call, like, I guess, a moldy fig? Well, they're, um, they're, 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 they're reinterpretations yeah, of old yeah. standards, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mac, so if people want to get in touch with you, they can get in touch with you through Mac at newbrasscollective.com. Right. And www.newbrasscollective.com is the website. Right. You have any uh, sound tapes, sound samples up on those sites? Uh, the CDs are available on that site. Mac Colahan. Mac. Oh, thank you very thank much. You very, yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. You know, yeah. Us, you know, really enjoyed it. And, yeah. Um, again, Mac at newbrasscollective.com. The website, www.newbrasscollective.com. Uh, you have any questions? I'm sure Mac will uh, handle them. If anything that you want to know that you didn't hear, you know what you got to do. Okay, Mac, thanks again. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. It's been a real pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, right. Great. Okay.